Hey, it's James here from GoodGuitars.com, and today I have a student, Laura, and we're going to try something a bit different. You know, normally I just do song tutorials, and today I'm actually going to teach a real student so we can see some, I guess, you know, some of the real problems that come up with people. And maybe, like Laura, you'll benefit from the same sort of thing. Uh, first of all, how long have you been playing guitar for? Um, a long time, actually. I yeah. started in grade nine. I took it in school. Um, but I don't really feel like I've progressed. Like yeah. everything I learned in grade nine, I think I'm kind of still at the same level. Yeah, so. like in your own words, like describe where you're at with guitar. Like what kind of stuff do you do on guitar? Um, I play chords. I can do easy finger picking. Um, I can sing along with songs as long as the rhythm is simple. And I want to do some more complicated songs and be able to keep the rhythm and maybe do some more complicated finger picking things. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, right on. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're going to be doing today then. Awesome. And then, yeah, I feel like I give up really easily, so that's part of why I want a lesson to maybe have something to push me. Um, so as far as uh, like strumming and chords go, um, do you have any songs that you can kind of, that you've been practicing so much or played for so long? Yeah, for sure. Like I always play Long Black Veil, for example. Oh, cool. Do you want to, do you mind just busting that out? Let's just see how, how this goes. Like. Just yeah, no, pr I get it. It's super weird. You're on camera and stuff. Like, Let's just playing guitar, not singing. Can you sing? Well, never. I probably could because I feel like I don't even know if I, I've never just played guitar. That's the other thing. I always just sing and play at okay. the same time, which That's is probably perfect. Part of what's up yeah you're, you're pretty good you know you have like your rhythm was all together like you sang and played through it steadily that's great no that's easy <laughs> okay, well, what now um so moving past I guess that you know because you have like accomplished that level yeah. it's not like you're still working on the basic chords yeah. to like uh, the nth degree like you've yeah. gotten some mileage out of them now what sort of things are you doing that are like challenging you like what have you been working on anything lately that's yeah so this song I mean it's an super simple song but it's like it just goes like over and over and over again and at first I can do it mm -hmm. and then as it gets on it starts like the sound it starts like getting that. tiring hey? the whole thing and then like the chorus is like So it's over and over and over It's just again, a lot of one. B flat and like a yeah. lot of like harping on that. Cool. First thing actually, before we get into the bar chords, when you're picking that little D minor thing, can I just hear it just, um, just for the timing? Cool. So do you practice much with a metronome? No. No. I should. That's that's <laughs> it's very normal to not practice with a metronome. I tried to record a song a once on GarageBand with yeah. a like a drum. Yeah. And it was so bad. I think uh, the way to practice with a metronome, why it scares so many people or makes people turns people off from it, is that they just play like their whole song or whatever with it. But in reality, you wanna just do a little bit of something and get really good at a little bit of something with a metronome. Two and three and four. So it starts on the and after four. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna count one, two, three, four, bang, do, 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 and just try to get that much of it. One, two, three, four. That was the perfect time. It feels just... so wrong. <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And do you think you could go now? One, two, three, four. rhythm okay try it on your own now without my guidance you count one two three four nice two three four two three four two three four am i getting it 
You're, you are. Let's go back now. Can I just hear you play it without the metronome once again? Like the whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. Sounds better already. Crazy. This is gonna be a bit slower, but let's try the whole thing just going. bit ahead of it and then the thing is when we find that we're ahead we try to overcompensate and then we'll slow down too much and then we'll get behind and we play this like little catch-up race you know like a bike handlebar start shaking it's like death wobble you know it's like one of those things like go left oh no <laughs> um cool that i feel that's already a lot better so awesome. you know that's how you metronome things up it doesn't have to be this scary like i gotta play my song perfectly with a metronome first try you know like within each measure within each beat how precise, you know, since people started recording music, I think people have really, really like honed in on that. And that brings us to the next thing that we're gonna work on, which is bar chords. Honestly, for the endurance thing, the only uh, thing that we can look at is posture. Cause I think that's probably the biggest thing is like how, where you're drawing the energy from okay. for your bar chords. Um, a lot of the time when we're just getting started, the bar chord is all just squeezing with your hand. Right? And, that's, and it's all just localized, right? Ultimately though, your fingers have the weakest muscles in your entire arm. If you're looking at it all the way from like back here from your shoulder blade, that's where the power should really be coming from. Let's try something. Um, I want you to put your arm like firmly on the guitar like here because you're gonna be kind of pulling on the fretboard. Can you just pull on the fretboard? Yeah, so you got it firmly under your arm. Yeah. Let's take our fingers and let's try to make that shape without touching our thumb to the back of the neck. So just pulling with your like wing bone, just pulling back and use that to apply pressure instead of your thumb. So see my thumb is not even on the front. Yeah, no, it's not either. Just okay. hit the strings. Whoa, that's working. Just using your shoulder instead of your hand, right? Now what I want you to do, this is gonna be your starting point, okay. is um, going between two things. The way that you already play it, where you just squeeze with your hand and then the way where you lend it some help by pulling back with your shoulder a little bit. Okay. So let's just try playing B flat, squeezing with our hand. Now lend it some of that shoulder strength and let go and release with your hand as you do that. Release with your thumb. Now go back to your thumb and, and then go back to pulling with your shoulder. And you don't have to take your thumb off. You just, that's your chance to let your thumb relax. Right, that feels good. Get, get, a, get more torque, basically, you know, and tighten up. Yeah. And, and, be, and quick rundown, your shoulder pulls back on your elbow. So you kind of feel your elbow pulling back and then your fingers have to do like nothing at that point. You know, because bar chords are like 50% technique, 50% strength. And you probably already have the strength bit down because you can play it, you know, for a little bit. Yeah. So the technique is what's going to give you that endurance, right? right? Doing it a whole bunch isn't going to give you endurance. Like holding bar chords doesn't make you stronger. It just wears mm -hmm. down your tendons and stuff. Like going to the gym and like doing like exercises designed for this would, would make you stronger and it might improve your bar chords too. But why not just like, just use different muscles that yeah. are way bigger and you already have all the strength you need, right? Yeah. So that's, that's where the technique thing comes in. So just remember, it's, it's just... It's just this motion, you know, it's just okay. this. Yeah, I feel it already here, and it looks yeah. better too. Yeah. Another thing, just, I don't know if this, this might come in handy later down the road, but there's a difference between fingertip pressure and grasping. Think about like if you had to climb a rope. So you're falling off the edge of a cliff and somebody puts down a rope. You're not going to grab the rope like this, right? No. You're going to grab the rope like like this, that, that's instinctively, like say I said, I'll give you a million dollars if you can rip this out of a hand. That's how you grab it, right? <laughs> it's like that, instead of like this. Right. But yet we play guitar like this, right? right? We're like pressing with our fingertips. That's requiring way more energy than it needs to, right? right? Whereas if you grasp with this part by putting your finger a little bit higher, 
that'll also give you a, a lot more power without having to actually get stronger. Yeah, I feel that. So those are the two things that I'd consider. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's it for today. Hopefully you learned something, you know, by, by kind of putting yourself in another student's shoes, we can see how to, how to work through the things, you know, it's not just a matter of the information, but how we process it. So that was my goal with this one. And if like Laura, you need help with bar chords and finger picking, um, take a look down below. I'll have some links to some of my offerings and that stuff is designed to get you through all of that as easy and quickly as possible. Either way, I'd love to hear what you think about this sort of thing. So please leave me a comment down below or you can email me info at goodguitarist.com. Otherwise, have a good one and I'll see you next time. Okay, I'm gonna do a weird little intro thing and then it'll be our lesson. Hey, hey, it's James here from Good